And we're live. Hello, everyone. This is in world. This is Marvin with my boy Hakeem. What's dropping? Uh, you know, tonight we're gonna try a new thing. Uh, a new series that I'm gonna call the Mini Goon Goblet. Uh, credit to Hakeem for the goblet bit. Hey. I thought I was gonna match with the round table theme, you know. Set it up right, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Since it says to us two goons, we're gonna try out this new series where it's just between just two just two goons talking about stuff. This will be our more shorter episodes. And to start with we'll, this is episode one. We're gonna talk about Hakeem's trip to Momocon. Well, I shouldn't call it trip, but visit since Momocon happens in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Floor is yours, bro. How was it? Well, I'll say it was really fun, honestly. It's the first one back since 2019, basically, since, you know, COVID. So the energy was definitely very different. I'll say everyone was, like, so, like, lively and, like, just, like, really, really happy to be there because it was, like, you know, just on for a while it was kind of like a reunion but even more so because of the time that it actually was between since the last one so it was fun to say the least (laughs) it was very fun a lot of people had good cosplays i got a lot of pictures you know we were booming there were some good panels that's what's up unfortunately i wanted to go but my financial situation is has not been good over at the old family job, so I couldn't make it at all. Maybe next year or the next one after that. Hell yeah. Well, whichever happens. Yeah, we gonna make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Uh. Was there anything you wanted to ask <laughs> specifically? Cause I could, I got stuff to say. I know, I know. Let's let's let me, cause like we gotta build it up, right? Uh, so okay, you went there on which day? Like Friday, right? Uh, Friday and Saturday. Okay. Because those are the most lit days. Uh, what would you say is a must? What's uh the top thing? Like the most mandatory thing you can do? You have to do there when you visit Momocon. I think the top thing you want to do at Momocon is... Shower. Uh, shower? I'm <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, definitely do that. Cause, woo, yeah. It was a lot better this year. It was, it was a lot better this year. I feel like COVID really put a lot of people on to uh, health to, hygiene. <laughs> yeah, they put them on to, the, to one of the most important inventions in human history, the soap. The oh, bath soap. God. Oh God! Um, I'm a degener- I'm sorry, everyone. You know, I like to crack my jokes. Please don't take these seriously. I I love you, pl- platonically. Bro, I'm not even gonna lie. The, the Smash tournament last time in 2019 smelled like a classic Smash tournament. <laughs> but a classic. But this year, I don't know if, if whether it's not because everybody had masks on and I couldn't smell anything, or if people just got their hygiene together. But it was a lot better. It was way better. It was like. Just being in the north. <laughs> and, uh, fantastic. Yeah. But um as far as the most the most uh most lit thing about Momocon, let me see. Let me actually think about this because there's like a lot of different things that you can get a lot of different levels of enjoyment out of. I'll say personally for me, um personally for me the most exciting thing is finding well yeah that could be a lot of things I guess there's not just one thing but finding what the reason you're there for is and enjoying that or just be willing to enjoy anything so just be just be willing to have a good time I would say is like what's going to be a super important thing for normal time because there's a lot of different events that happen usually and there's like different panels different um actors and like voice actors that pull up different like people in the nerd community, you know, just like any other con. And um obviously the cosplays and everything. 
that's always fun to like walk around, hang out with people, take pictures, talk, stuff like that. And then playing games as well. In the lower levels, there's like board games, arcade games, like dance games, stuff like that, rhythm games, people playing uh, tabletop games, computer game tournaments. That's all fun. So it's like. I would say like it's it's a lot it's a lot of fun going with going with uh going with friends. Mm-hmm. And if you're outgoing or you just like really have stuff that you like are really interested in, it can also be a lot of fun to like go in and talk and meet new people too. Because even though we went um as like a group uh in some points, we still like kind of branched out and like met new people and stuff and started hanging out with. I was playing some games with a couple of new people that I met. And so it's just cool to um, just get out and talk with the community, just like kind of check in with the people that you see posting out of pocket shit on Twitter. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it'd be like that. It'd be like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, if you're going to any con, you should always like, go there for, with the aim of enjoying yourself because that's what conventions are for. Mm-hmm. Oh, niche. or just be willing to enjoy everything. Speaking of, I I think I think we've forgotten to mention some more details about MobileCon. What's that? <laughs> uh, man, I'm sometimes I'm really bad at interviewing people and doing these things. But yeah, anyways, uh, MomoCon just in, just because I I need to remember to do these things. MomoCon is a convention that happens in Atlanta, Georgia. Happens like. May sixth to May twenty ninth, right? Uh twenty sixth. Yeah, it starts yeah. from May twenty sixth to May twenty ninth. Yeah. 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 Usually Second. around. Happens every yeah. year, you know, despite well, minus what happened with the whole pandemic. Just just has a lot of anime and nerd stuff, you know, comparable to all the anime cons. It's one of the more popular ones, is it? It is pretty popular, I'll say. They've been starting to uh, advertise it a lot more as well. Like, um, I know that a lot of uh, people who play in, like, tournaments and stuff, like the Momocon tournaments um, that they have, like, for Smash and whatnot, it's a pretty, like, I think, in the Smash community, it's a reputable tournament. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think. Hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think I like to think it's pretty popular. Both uh, both of the times that I went, there's been like a super good showing of people, just like a lot of people enjoying themselves. This was so. Uh, was there anything that you saw there that was a standout? Before you mentioned the rap thing, we're saving that I was for just later. About to say that. <laughs> just what I was about to say. We wanna you gotta save the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured I'm sitting on it. I was like, I was waiting for you to ask about it. Mm-hmm. Um, anything stand out? Uh, it was cool to me. The uh, oh yeah, I forgot about the merchandise too. Merchandise, we uh, um, but I'll get to that later. Uh, what stands out? Um, I will say that things that stand out at Momocon could just be the panel choices that they have because they have some pretty some pretty interesting panels i know one uh one of the ones went to is uh they have some pretty pretty uh controversial panels on the one side the like fun controversial ones where there's like uh talking about like oh what does it mean to be a mary sue in literature or like art and media and stuff like that and then there's like another one about uh the stereotypes around like having uh strong female characters and stuff like that that's important to be honest yeah and so people be getting really into that because that <laughs> that was one of the highlights when we went in 2019 that was funny it's like seeing people's uh perspectives and debating on that and then it's like ah, well <laughs> Yeah, people generally in the panels and those like discussive discussive panels and um sometimes informative panels too, like workshops and stuff like that. Whenever people do get into their like opinions and they start debating stuff, it's really it's really cool because 
it it feels kind of like a uh, kind of like a debate session almost because people are really getting into it and then other people start getting involved and it's just like everybody's sharing their ideas just having a conversation it can get pretty heated sometimes but generally it's kept in the pocket that's fair I like I like that though like the panels talk about important things in literature and how to write how to go about writing characters yeah. I feel like that one's important now that since nowadays we're becoming more diverse in, in like who gets to be the main character. Yeah. That's oh. one of the some of the main ones that I actually go to is the stuff about uh stuff like that and then like other things like workshop things. Like there was one especially that I liked was uh it was about um uh, being a content creator and a media creator and protecting your IPs. And all the uh, the steps and pitfalls that people go through when they end up like licensing out their work um, incorrectly, and then somebody gets credit for their ideas and they can't do anything about it. So I like stuff like that. Like they have like inside information about like stuff that goes on behind the scenes and stuff you need to watch out for and protect yourself from. I feel like that's a really cool thing. That was that was a, a standout panel for me. So the panels in general, but that was definitely. One of my favorites. Yeah. There was one guy in the panel that was funny. He he was dead ass. Like he was super, super confident that um that Marvel and Disney owned the rights to Spider Man. <laughs> and that Sony was licensing it from them. And he was so wrong. But <laughs> but he was so confident in his answer that like he got everybody up like Everybody was like, yo, bro, Sony has the rights. He's like, no, Marvel has the rights. And they license even Sony. Like, no, bro, Sony has the rights. Yeah, Sony still has the rights to do this for the Spider-Man movies, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, okay, that's what he was confused about. Yeah, he got, he, he's confused. He's just a little confused. Like, really like, Disney and Marvel owns the Spider-Man uh, IP, but for movie rights, it's all Sony since, like, forever. Mm-hmm. Cause they're because they were smart and said, "Listen, Spider Man is what people like the most. He's your big boy. We want that." Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here to make. We are here to make bread. Literally, and they did it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was that about standing out. Also, the people. There's it, it's hard to say something that stands out because I get excited. I'm getting excited about a lot of different stuff. There was, unfortunately, I didn't get to go because it was full. Understandably, yeah. um, the, the panel was full, but it was on Saturday. There was tea time with Uncle Iro, who was um, Uncle Iro's voice actor. Yo, that's what's up. Yeah, it was like when I had gotten there, the line for the, to get into the panel was like wrapped all the way around like the hallway area that it was in, and then they were telling people like, "Hey, this panel's full. Like, y'all gotta go to another panel." I'm just like, "Nah." <laughs> but I did go see. Uh, instead, I I saw there was a choice that I had to make was either go talk, go see Uncle Iroh, or go see uh, Luffy's voice actor in the dub, uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard. So that was pretty cool too. Unfortunately, she was um she was uh recovering from being sick, so it was a little tough for her, and she wasn't like able to uh do a lot of voice lines and stuff. But it was still cool. Mm. Okay, now now I feel bad for not going. <laughs> <laughs> bro, next time next year, bro, we're doing it. Next year we're doing it. Don't worry, you Marvin will appear. Hell yeah. I'll I'll pull up with a grill to to go. A grill and a sandal. <laughs> the grill with the sandals. I'll grill inside the Momocon. <laughs> Want some burgers? <laughs> um. Oh well. Oh, that's all good. That's good enough. But it's time for the most important question, Hakeem. All right. The anime Sorry. rap. <laughs> the anime rap takeover. I know, I know Ooh. you want to talk about that the most, bro. I do. That was a standout. 
That was definitely a stand up. All right, so for anybody who's wondering, anybody who doesn't know about uh, anime rap, things like that, if you've ever listened, you know that um, in the, like, the nerd communities, there's a lot of anime rappers and things like that. Yeah. And in this MomoCon in particular, there's a particular group of uh, made up of uh, Game Boy Jones, Rustage, uh, GM Steady, um, Breedin Boy, and uh, some other rappers, uh, Wabadi, some other uh, anime rappers, and they formed a group called Anime Rap Takeover. And basically their goal with that was to bring anime rap to the live stage and do live performances. And their first performance was at Momocon this year. And let me tell you, that, they had a little bit of technical, technical difficulties, but that was heat. It was way better than anything that I was expecting it to be. Like, I didn't, I didn't try to uh, set any low hopes or anything. I was just more interested in, like, you know, seeing what, how they were going to perform, seeing what they were going to do. But they really pulled up. Like, they, you could tell, like, they actually put in the time. They put in the work. They put in the performance. Like, they were, they were performing up there. They had a good actual show. It wasn't just a bunch of anime rappers coming up saying, like, um, oh, they were just, like, sitting in a chair or something and doing their raps or, like, sitting behind the computer. No, they were actually up there live performing, like, like you're at an actual, like, uh, like a, at an actual, like, a hip-hop concert, like a mainstream hip-hop concert, basically. And that, to me, was, like, they had everybody into it. They had the crowd into it. They had the producers into it, everybody that was up on the stage, you know, everybody was like, the energy was up, like, they even had, I remember somebody's mom, like, some kid's mom was like, what, like, 40 to 50, she was like, busting it down to some Game Boy Jones, like, I was just like, you know, this is lit. <laughs> it okay. was crazy. Game, Game Boy Jones sounds exactly like the type of rapper name I would expect for niggas from, like, the MF Doom era. Oh, well, yeah. MF Doom's time, I guess. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> MF Doom is a fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I love rap snitches. That's a, that was a good. That's a good song. Yeah. But yeah, that's what's up. Uh, yo, what was the last time I even heard an anime rap? It's, it must have been a long ass time ago when Machinima was still a thing. And you weren't here when AD was uh hyping it. AD, you know AD, his boy Rustage. <laughs> I I I think I think I think I was there. I don't remember. No. Man, I probably wasn't. I was probably asleep when y- y'all were talking about it. Who knows? That's fair. You know me. I'm around when I'm needed. <laughs> yeah, I respect it. Yeah, but that it was definitely. I liked it. I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. It was. I think it was better than a lot of people expected. Um, yeah, I ended up getting some videos too. Got a lot. My phone was dying. My yeah. phone did die actually. Yes. Oh man, I'm sure they uploaded some of their songs or some uploading like their live on, on oh, YouTube somewhere, so they can just look it up. Like, yeah. at, like anime takeover, MumbleCon 2022, some shit, and they'll find yeah, whatever I'll they want. Yeah, and I'll say for everybody listening to me now, if you're into anime rap and stuff like that, go and check them out. Anime rap takeover. Go and check them out. Go and support them. They're just getting started. And from what I'm seeing from like what they're starting with, I'm definitely down with it. I'm definitely down with bringing anime rap to you know do live performances and hype up stuff like that. Yeah, get the get the the nerd community really out there. I fuck with it. That said, let's go back a little bit to like an earlier question on what they should be doing. I feel like we could still like give them more advice for for them to prepare for the trip in the future. Now that we've recommended them a solid ten out of ten for Momocon. <laughs> All right. Um. So as far as going, I would say definitely. Uh, either be prepared to spend some money on food. Or have some places in mind 
that you want to go to around the area. There's some great places here in Atlanta, pretty much everywhere. If you want to go and get some food, there's like a bunch of different places in the area you can plan to like plan a little excursion out there and go eat. Or, or you can bring snacks or bring your own food, bring stuff like that. That's what I was doing basically. I was just like, I packed up my lunch from the day or on the day, like in the beginning of the day, and then I would just carry it with me. It was pretty efficient too. I just unpack it and be sitting in there chilling or something. I just had my food on me. So we could just take a break for a little bit, chill out, and then go back to having fun. What if they're not from the area, though? What if they're coming from, like, let's say, out of state? Yeah, if you're coming from out of state, I would say, I could say the same thing applies, but you're going to have to, you know, obviously uh, care how your food travels or tech for that. Bring, like, a insulated lunchbox or something like that or something like that. If you're, if you're driving, yeah. If you're like mm-hmm. me from New York, then that's probably not like very possible unless I'm carrying chips. Chips? You can't bring a lunchbox? That's right. Uh, it's, it, you probably can uh, if you're on a plane. Well, I mean, maybe you don't have to bring the food there. I guess maybe. Well, I would maybe. say like, okay, so like so say you wanted to like bring the lunchbox, but it's empty, right? Yeah. And then you get some food while you're down here and then you put it in the lunchbox <laughs> Dude, well, go, gro- <laughs> go grocery shopping in Atlanta yeah. bring it back yeah. to your hotel room and- <laughs> there's a public like, right down the street from Omicron so, like, <laughs> five, and it walks. so you can make it happen make you yourself wanna- make yourself a quick sandwich don't buy too much so that you don't have to, so you don't waste yeah. money on, on the shit that'll, that'll go to waste though yeah that's for that's for all my my, my Google Google people out there Go ahead and go to that Publix down there. Grab yourself a sub. <laughs> open the lunchbox. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that and water. Bring a lot of water because you don't want to be dehydrated. Because it's a lot of walking around too. Mm-hmm. Unless you uh, unless you want to sit around a lot. It's a good it's workout. A- yeah, it is. So make sure you have some good shoes. Good padding on the shoes. Make sure they're comfortable. Make sure you're comfortable in general. I'll say. Especially, like, if you're going to be cosplaying. Obviously, if you're a cosplayer, you know, like, the struggle is, like, if you're if you're going to be uncomfortable, you're going to be uncomfortable. But I would say just try to be as comfortable as possible because you're going to be out there for a grip. And who wants to be uncomfortable while trying to have fun? That's true. Pack comfortable shoes that are good for walking. Make sure you stretch your your feet too. I'm I'm talking about your actual feet, like from your uh, in any way you can. Mm-hmm. I I learned this fact from um on TikTok that that appeared on my for you page. Mm-hmm. I for, I forgot the cast name, but the point is like that particular TikTok was talking about. Oh, you know, your feet hurt while walking. Try this. Stretch out your feet, and he just showed this technique. Um. It's hard to explain it because I'm not good at, at explaining things when teaching people stuff. But the point is, it's like you just stretch back your feet, the top of your foot, where your toes mm-hmm. are more or less, back towards you at least, um, so that you can stretch out the muscles from from your toes d- down to the um to the, I guess to your heel, so mm-hmm. that it'll have less strain, and flexibility so that walk will be more comfortable yeah it's tech yeah um i'm, I'm sure there's places like on youtube so they'll show you how to you know show you how to stretch out that particular part of your feet so that it won't hurt so much and other other stuff mm. i guess for me i guess i can give some advice considering i was planning on coming here but uh Really, really plan ahead of time. Really consolidate your funds, like collect them up, and make sure you have enough for for the for however long you're staying there. Maybe you're planning on taking advantage of the time to stay there for like the week, yeah. so that you can do other things around Atlanta before Momocon. Or if you're just staying there for the weekend, then just save up enough for that particular time frame. And and along with whatever activities you want to do afterwards, 
and really, really take advantage of like buying flakes ahead of time. And this one thing I'm always like nagging at my parents about every time when they plan for, to go to DR is to try to buy the tickets like ahead of time because chances are at least like if you're getting round trip, it'll be cheaper. Mm. Maybe I mean you know flights. Uh, but definitely, definitely, like, collect your funds and budget yourself so that you can have something going on while you're down there. Mm -hmm. Especially if you plan on using your your credit card to pay for certain things because then you will you have to prepare to pay that back, you know? Oh, yep. And to add to that, merchandise. Make sure you budget for merchandise, too, because... There's a lot of cool stuff in there, a lot of unique stuff, a lot of like uh, handmade art and sculptures and things like that that people put a lot of work and time into, and it's some really nice stuff. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I like that. Sorry, f sorry for that pause. I was paying off. I was paying off my credit card. <laughs> While well, we talk about like, you know what? Let me do that now. Now that I've, uh, I have the some disposable funds. It's only like a hundred twenty something. You know, not a big deal. <laughs> but I want to leave it alone. You know, don't want it to build up. But nah, you know that was the uh, that was the episode. Thanks for watching the mini goblet, the mini goon goblet, first episode of. Of this series, this side series, um, oh, yeah. and as I wrap it up, I guess, um, be on the lookout for whenever I create a proper schedule. I will learn how to be organized. All right, All right. good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.